What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and this past week was just another week of Apple releasing new software for every device except for the Mac. So on Wednesday, we got the release of iOS and iPadOS 15 beta 7, along with tvOS 15 beta 7 and watchOS 8 beta 7. And then just hours after that, Apple actually pushed out the public betas for all of these as well, which is the first time they've done that throughout the entire iOS 15 beta cycle. So I would expect that from here on out. So the public beta to be released the same day as the developer betas, which usually happens once we get close to a final release, but it's nice for public beta testers that you're getting it the same day now as developers versus a day later. But again, there was no sign of a new Mac OS Monterey beta. We're still on beta five of that. So not sure what's going on there, but Apple is definitely taking their time with it. And it might have something to do with universal control and making sure that is working properly since we still do not have that in the Mac OS betas yet. But anyways, in this video, we're going to be discussing iOS and iPadOS 15 beta 7 and some additional new features and changes found along with how it's been performing in terms of battery life bugs and just overall performance. So let's first start off by going over some of these additional new features and changes. And if you guys watched my what's new video, you would know that beta 7 is a very bug fix oriented update. There are not going to be very many features or changes in this update but I did find a few extras that I did not mention in my what's new video. And the first one is actually inside of music. And if you're using third party headphones, Apple Music, the Dolby Atmos is working again. So if you see like lossless audio or spatial audio, you see the badge now and it's actually working properly for third party headphones. So if you're using those, it was not working, I believe in the past two betas, but now it is working again in Apple Music. Another change is inside of settings, general, and then down to VPN and device management. And then we have sign in to work or school accounts. And when you tap on that, there are just some very minor changes right here. So the placeholder text, it used to say email, now it says email address. And then also we have the learn more button down here as well, which is just reworded. So very minor changes, but that is changed here in beta 7 compared to beta 6. And speaking of very small changes inside of settings, if we go to our settings and then to privacy and then to location services and then all the way down to system services. And if we go down to product improvement, you will notice that improved maps has been removed. So it might just be routing and traffic now, but whatever the case may be before on beta 6, it said improved maps but that has been removed and possibly just replaced with routing and traffic now. Also inside of the maps application, if you're in a major city, you can actually zoom in a lot further now to city streets and you can see a lot more detail than you could previously. Now I'm sure this has been there for a couple of betas, but I'm just now noticing this and you can see you can zoom in so far onto these city streets, it's insane. You can see the trees and everything. It looks really cool, especially when you tap on 3D right there, you can see the buildings kind of pop like that. So this is only available in major cities, but you can see a lot of detail now here in iOS 15. So I really love that. I can't do this in my area, but for places like San Francisco, New York, places like that, you'll be able to see a lot of detail when you zoom in. Also in beta seven, the scheduled summary is now working properly. So if you went into your settings and then went to notifications right here and then to scheduled summary, sometimes your first schedule will just automatically be removed and you'd have to add it back. So I heard a couple of people with that issue on beta six and then also the scheduled summary would sometimes just not appear on your device at all at the given time you put, but apparently that has been fixed here in beta seven. I never faced that myself, but I saw at least two people comments on my videos talking about that issue. So that has been addressed as well for scheduled summary. So again, not a ton of major changes here in a beta seven, and I really would not expect any different from beta eight and pretty much any other beta from here on out. I think we're gonna see the majority of changes and actual features in the point updates, like 15.0.1 or 15.1, especially in 15.2, we're going to start seeing more, you know, major features and changes, not just these little minor, you know, text changes like that. But that's expected for you know once we're on a seventh beta you don't really expect too many new features but i would expect those again in the coming months with the points updates we should see quite a few things added to ios 15. now as far as bugs and bug fixes go i did want to mention that i did have a bug inside of the messages application so specifically inside of group chats i would notice that the contact photo sometimes does not appear in a group chat and it just shows like the initials for the person so, like for example my profile picture right here sometimes in a group chat it just would not appear and it would just show bb next to my name so minor issues 
with the messages application related to group chats. I've not had that on any previous beta, so that appears to be a new bug. And then also Twitter crashing is actually still happening here in iOS 15 beta 7. So I jumped the gun in my what's new video because it did not crash throughout the entire time I was prepping for that video and when I recorded that video, but Twitter is still crashing for some people on launch. So sometimes when you close out of the application and then just go in like this, it will crash the first time and then it will open up. But still for me, it's not really happening too often. Some people did say that removing the Twitter application, like deleting it and reinstalling it helped and it doesn't crash anymore, but I have not tried that out myself. So Twitter is still crashing, unfortunately, for a lot of people and I would expect that to be fixed honestly probably at this point just when ios 15 gets released to the public and then it's the same deal with the banking application so if your banking application still does not work here in beta 7 i would not be you know holding on for an update anytime soon i would expect that to be when ios 15 gets released to the public which is still pretty soon but it's going to be weeks away still if you're having issues with banking applications like me personally my banking application my face id is broken and just i cannot use face ID for my banking application. I have to use Safari now to log in. And then also some people are having AirPods connectivity issues. So me personally, I use my AirPods every single day. So I use my AirPods Pro and my AirPods Max interchangeably throughout the day, pretty much every single day of the week, including the weekend sometimes. And I've not had any issue with AirPods connectivity, but I have seen a few of you mention that as well. And we'll talk about that in the community poll. Now, as far as the performance goes here in beta seven, it's actually been running really, really well for me so far on all of my devices. And the iPad is actually where I saw a big increase in performance here on beta seven. So like I mentioned in previous videos, I play World Series of Poker and I game on there and everything, the applications are running a lot better now than they were in previous beta. So iPad OS 15 beta seven is excellent. As far as iOS, it feels about the same as beta six to me, but we do have some bug fixes that just makes it feel, you know, a little bit more stable overall, which is always a good thing. And as far as battery life goes, the battery life feels about the same as well as beta six, if anything, it will be slightly better. And you can see there, I just got my 20% alert, but you can see I've not charged my phone since just before six o'clock. So five something o'clock was the last time I charged my phone and I've been using it consistently ever since then. You can see it's now 2 a.m. So the battery life is pretty good here on beta seven. I think it is slightly better than beta six, but beta six was a big jump from beta five. So a nice increase here in beta seven as well. Battery life, I've had no issues for the past couple of betas on that. Again, beta five was the last time I really had any complaints about the battery life. And I would expect battery life to continue getting better until the final release. And we should also see some improvements to battery life with the point updates as well. All right, so now let's go ahead and move on to the community poll to see how this update is running for you guys. So if you go to my channel right here and then go to the community tab, you can see I asked, how has iOS 15 beta seven been running for you so far? And my answer is going to have to be excellent. I have no major bugs and I have good battery life. And that is the most popular vote right there with 29%. That is the highest of any iOS 15 beta yet, which is expected, but it's nice to see 29%. That is very good. So for comparison, you can see we had 24% for excellent on beta six. We had 22% on beta five. So take a look at that jump from 22% all the way up to 29% over the span of two betas. That is impressive. And as you guys can tell, this beta is running a lot better for everybody else as well compared to just a couple of weeks ago. So let's go ahead and see what you guys had to say about this update right there. You can see the first thing I asked is, is Twitter still crashing for you on a beta seven? You can see everybody's response there, a very obvious, yes, it's still crashing for everybody like I mentioned earlier. So that is kind of annoying. Let's move on to some of the other comments you guys had to read here and keep in mind I read every single comment I may not mention everyone on video but I do read every single one so I appreciate everybody who leaves a comment on any community post but especially these about the iOS updates Mert here said that battery life is similar to iOS 14 that's a good sign and he says he has no major issues with 15 beta 7 sometimes my phone gets hot while using it so that's common I don't think that's really an issue with the betas I have had random connection issues with AirPods and random freezing here and there, but otherwise it seems pretty good. So sounds about right. iOS 15 beta seven feels great. Battery life has improved incredibly 
and performance is very smooth and stable. Still a few app crashes here and there, but so far I love it. I'm excited for the official release. So that is good news there as well. Thank you, Archie, for that comment. Almost everything is great except for the notification center with a focus mode enabled. Half the time I swipe down when opening a group of notifications, it glitches and it's becoming very annoying. So I've not had that and I use focus modes every single day and I've not noticed an issue with that. So that's interesting. If you could send a screenshot of that and send it to me over on Twitter, that would be great because I've not seen that. Running so good that I forgot for a minute that I was running a beta software on my device. So that's what William said there. And that's always a great sign that you know usually tells us that we're very close to a public release, which in this case we are. It's taking quite a few seconds to connect my AirPods when I put them on and the Wi-Fi seems to not work on my phone when it wasn't doing that before the update. So issues with Wi-Fi and AirPods once again. I wish they would fix the iPhone storage almost full bug. I hate seeing that badge on my settings all the time. So I'm not sure if that's a bug. You might actually just need you know, to clear some of your storage there. You probably have a 16 or a 32 gigabyte device. So look into maybe deleting some of the applications or offloading the apps that you don't use. Still have a bug when I have to touch on a mail notification. It shifts up to the point where I can't press the buttons without scrolling. So interesting, I've not had that, but then again, I don't get notifications for my mail. Otherwise my battery would be dead in about an hour, but that is an interesting bug right there. Omri here is having issues with shortcut automations. So I've seen a few people mention that as well. So we might still have some issues with the shortcuts app. I've had the Twitter app crash a few times on me now. I had apps all that seemed to hang or not update to where I had to reboot twice. This is the worst beta for me personally. Never felt the need to reboot on the others. So that is the first time I've heard somebody having to, you know, reboot and have issues with beta seven. That's very interesting. Maybe just a clean slate, you know, of beta seven, maybe re, you know, reinstall the update on your phone and you'll be fine because I've not seen anybody else have issues like that here on beta seven. Here's an interesting bug. Siri voice is completely random. Sometimes it's the normal voice and other times it's the generic one, like from speaking text and even in maps too. So it seems like Siri might have some issues here in iOS 15 beta seven. I've not had that, but that would actually be a pretty funny bug if that did happen to me. So again, thank you to everybody who commented in this poll. I really do appreciate it. it really helps me and the whole channel understand, you know, how these updates are doing for the masses. All right, so now what is next for Apple? So next week is going to be the week of August 30th, and that is going to lead in to the beginning of September. So I would expect to see an iOS 15 and iPad OS 15 beta eight this upcoming week. So the week of the 30th, I'm going to guess either the 31st or September 1st is when we should see a new iOS and iPad OS 15 beta update. And I'm guessing that this is going to be another A build. So we do have an A at the end of the build number for beta seven. I would expect another A at the end of the build number for beta eight. And then the following week after that, which is going to be the week of the sixth, that is when I would expect to see iOS 15 beta nine, or even possibly the RC build of iOS 15. Although we could even see both the same week. So early in the week, we could see beta nine. And then late in the week, we could see an RC and then potentially a final release the following week. So the week of the 13th, maybe on the 14th or the 15th is going to be the day we see iOS 15 released to the public. So those are my predictions as of now. Of course, make sure you guys follow me on Twitter to stay up to date with all of the latest iOS releases. And if you guys enjoy these follow-up videos that I do every single weekend, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you subscribe for a lot more iOS 15 coverage. I have a lot planned for next month. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Thank you.